Another week, another packed lineup of PlayStation 4 game releases, and in this video, we're going to be going over all of the eight new PS4 game releases, a lot of variety this week, and in fact, there was actually to be another major game release this week. This was supposed to be the week where Battlefield 5 was to be released, however, that was delayed and that was probably for the best, and remember that this is the last week before the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, so just something I thought I would note because I know that's your guys' most anticipated game of the year. However, that is next week, and there's a stacked lineup of game releases this week, so let's get right into it. Kicking things off, I want to go over what is probably the most anticipated game this week, and that is the latest entry in a long-running fighting game franchise in Soul Calibur with Soul Calibur 6. Yes, Soul Calibur is finally back. It's been a long time since the release of Soul Calibur 5, and Soul Calibur 6 will follow the general premise of other Soul Calibur titles. There are some new mechanics being introduced, such as Reversal Edge, which allows players to defend against an oncoming attack and quickly strike back. And if you guys have been following Soul Calibur, you know that there are always guest appearances from other games and with Soul Calibur 6 very exciting Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher franchise will be making an appearance he's actually featured prominently on the cover art of the game and it's pretty cool to see that as a big Witcher fan and I do think adding Geralt will have a positive impact commercially to this game because people are just gonna see the cover and realize hey that's a character I know that's a game that did very well was received very well Geralt is a very well received character as well so I think that was a very good decision by Bandai Namco and Soul Calibur 6 drops on October 19th あの、そこら辺のその、それぞれの文化とかポリシーはしっかりと踏まえた上で、え、状況有いろんなものをですね、やっぱりいろんな、え、根則において Next up, we have the Dark Souls Trilogy. Now, this isn't a brand new game, but for newcomers to Dark Souls and hardcore Dark Souls fans, I think this is something you'll want to know about. The Dark Souls Trilogy, as the title would suggest, includes Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls 2, and Dark Souls 3, the Fire Fades Edition. On top of all of that, it comes with an exclusive steel book with iconic Dark Souls art from across the entire series. Now, this has received a generally mixed reception because Dark Souls Remastered was just released earlier this year, and it seems like Bandai Namco is just trying to milk Dark Souls for all it's worth. I mean, Dark Souls is a pretty popular franchise, so I can understand it from a business side of things, but Dark Souls Trilogy, they might be pushing it a little bit too much, but I think hardcore Dark Souls fans are just gonna buy it for the really dope steel book. For the few people that are newcomers, I guess this is a good buy, but at the same time, it's coming at a very expensive price at $79.99. I think that's a little bit too high. If it was priced at $59.99, I would say, hey, that's one thing, because Dark Souls Remastered is a relatively new release, but you can find it for like $30. Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 are available rather cheap. So that $80 price point is seemingly just made up from the Steel Book, which I don't know how to feel about that. That seems kind of like a ripoff. But still, I thought I'd mention Dark Souls Trilogy as it's dropping on October 19th. Next up, we have a game that's going a little bit under the radar, but it is Heavy Fire Red Shadow. Heavy Fire Red Shadow is set in the not-so-distant future, and tension between a bold North Korea that has managed to establish a unification with South Korea entirely on its terms, and the United States have gone beyond their breaking point. You play as Sergeant Will, and you step onto an unforgiving battlefield, establish a beachhead, a hold fast between a turret mount and machine gun. A brutal and unceasing onslaught of enemy forces will attempt to flank and eliminate you, and they are coming from every angle as he and a few survivors comrades rain hell upon anything that crosses their iron sights. That's the official description of the game. And interestingly enough, with Heavy Fire Red Shadow, if you do pre-order the game, you will get this game in VR as well, and that's touted as a 30% discount. Heavy Fire Red Shadow is hitting the PlayStation 4 on October 16. Next up, we have Warriors Orochi 4. Now, the Warriors franchise has been a long-running series, but after the release of Dynasty Warriors 9, I think a lot of gamers were turned off by it. Me going into the release of Dynasty Warriors 9, I thought it had a lot of potential, but it really didn't turn out as well as I would hope. Well, now we have Warriors Orochi 4, and it seems like this is going back to your Warriors roots. Now, this is a bit different from Dynasty Warriors from the get-go. This encompasses characters from Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors, and each character has a class that determines their ability from power, speed, and technique. 
Introduced in Warriors Orochi 4 is also Magic and Sacred Treasures, techniques that allow characters to perform special feats to overcome various enemies. At this point, if you're not into the Warriors games, I don't think there's anything these games can do to really win you over, but Warriors Orochi 4 seems like your traditional Warriors game plan. I think that will resonate with the gamers that are already into it. Warriors Orochi 4 hits the PlayStation 4 on October 16th. <laughs> Next up, we have a game that isn't getting a lot of attention right now, but I think after its release and if it delivers, this is a game that a lot of gamers are going to be talking about, and that is Sinner's Sacrifice for Redemption. Now, when you look at Sinner, you're instantly going to think of a hardcore action RPG that is very difficult, so kind of similar to Dark Souls, and considering the Dark Souls trilogy is being released this week, kind of funny on that end. But Sinner's Sacrifice for Redemption has some very unique mechanics going on for it. It has you face eight abhorrent bosses, the first seven each based on one of the deadly sins. What's cool about this game is before each each epic battle, you have to sacrifice a stat and level down to enter combat. So that's kind of an interesting take on boss battling combat. Usually you accelerate your character and you get better and better. In this one, you're actually getting weaker and weaker on that basis and each fight will be tougher than the last as you wage war on Sin itself. Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption is a game that we've been covering a little bit on this channel going back to the spring, but now it'll finally be hitting the PlayStation 4 on October 18th. Hopefully it delivers and I do imagine that if it does, this is going to be a game a lot of people stream on Twitch and upload videos of, so it has has potential to gain a lot of traction. So again, one to keep your eyes on. I shall not be tricked again. I will rip the honey's tongue from your head and devour your life's heart. We will tear you live. Next up, we have the Hunter Call of the Wild 2019. The Hunter Call of the Wild touts the most immersive hunting experience ever created. You step into a beautiful open world teeming with life from majestic deer and awe-inspiring bison. There's countless birds, critters, and insects of the wilderness. And now the Hunter Call of the Wild is going to be re-released as the Hunter Call of the Wild 2019, a seemingly definitive version of the game. And this version will include your standard base game as well as all of the DLC packs released so far. And that enhances the experience quite a bit. And the Hunter Call of the Wild is a game that's been updated rather frequently. So if you want a quality experience that's somewhat evolving, I know we've gotten a lot of games like this, but the Hunter Call of the Wild has a little bit of a unique spin to it. And I would give it a recommendation, and this is definitely the version to check out if you've yet to pick it up. The Hunter Call of the Wild 2019 hits the PlayStation 4 on October 16th. That feeling, you just have to experience it for yourself. Next up, we have a brand new IP coming from Ubisoft, Starlink Battle for Atlas. This is a game that seems to have captivated some gamers. Starlink Battle for Atlas is an action-adventure game, and it's set in the Atlas star system. You venture into different parts of this system, meet with different alien species, and form an alliance with them in order to build a crew. These alliances will change the world state, which will then change your gameplay experience. Now, I know with Starlink Battle for Atlas, everybody's gonna point out to the fact that there's gonna be toys attached to the game, so Ubisoft is definitely trying to monetize their game. At least they're doing it in a unique way instead of just shoving down microtransactions in the game. Hopefully the game itself turns out well, and I've been happy that Ubisoft has been going out of their way to create all of these new IPs. You have titles like Starlink Battle for Atlas, and they've created other experiences as well. And in a world where gamers are always looking for new IPs to get them from a big publisher like Ubisoft, I think that's a positive. Starlink Battle for Atlas hits the PlayStation 4 on October 16th. The more of us there are, the stronger each of us is. Exactly. You must feed my legion. And finally, we have LEGO DC Super Villains. The LEGO titles have been around for a long time, but usually you play as the heroic characters with LEGO Star Wars, LEGO Batman, all of those other titles, but now we have LEGO DC Super Villains. You play and create an all-new supervillain throughout the game, unleashing mischievous antics and wrecking havoc in an action-packed story. It's set in an open world within the DC Universe, the Justice League has disappeared, leaving Earth's protection to their counterparts. They've proclaimed themselves as Justice Syndicate, and it's up to you and a crazy group of misfits to uncover the intentions of Earth's new strange wannabe superheroes. Looks to be a pretty quirky game, if you're into the LEGO games, this is a nice spin on it, and LEGO DC Supervillains drops on October 16th. So that concludes all of the 8 new PlayStation 4 game releases this 
this week. What do you think? Which games are you picking up this week, if any? Personally speaking, I'm really interested in Soul Calibur 6. I've been a long-time fan of the Soul Calibur franchise, and Geralt is one of my favorite characters, so that is an easy buy. Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, I think, has the potential to surprise a lot of people. I really like the mechanics that game is introducing, and I think come October 18th, a lot of gamers will be talking about it. I'm hoping the best for Starling Battle for Atlas, because whenever a new IP resonates, I just think that's good for the gaming world. But we want to hear from you. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.